Right, so having gone through behavior, we're now going to look at underlying strategy return before returning to some of the other components that you see under assets and timeframes for any particular Darwin. The reason we want to cover underlying strategy return first is that in future tutorials where we do some alpha research combining a lot of this data into a multidimensional data set for us to use for the research phase, we're going to need to model uh, certain things using underlying strategy returns. Therefore, it's best that we go through the process of getting uh, this data first. Now, the data, again, is stored in uh, any Darwin's root folder, and in this case, it's stored inside the return file. The structure of the return file is interesting. So first, let's go through, uh, let's and get that data so we can analyze it and uh, explain to you what each of the numbers in uh, the output mean. So for, for this, we'll get raw data from FTP without converting it into a usable form. We'll send the return file along with the false argument so that it does not convert the data. And here we have the data. Let's now take an example row and um, discuss what's in it. So you start again, as usual, it's a binary encoded line with uh, a Unix millisecond timestamp, the D periods accumulated up until this point in time, followed by an array of values. The length of this array differs, and there's no specific pattern or logic to it deferring. Uh, the importance of the values is what needs to be understood. The very first value is the very first return of the day. And any other values that you see are sequentially recorded over time for the purpose of constructing drawdown statistics. The very last value is the last return of the day. And it is this value that we'll need in order to compose our underlying strategy return series. If we take a look at the code, let's go to get return. This is what we achieve inside the source code. We first get the raw data, as you can see on this line. We then do some post-processing to it, where we decode the line. We replace the uh, end of line characters with spaces, uh, with empty spaces, and simply evaluate the line and store it inside a list. It is this list that is then used to construct a data frame with the appropriate values following their indices, and then output as a data frame that we can consume a lot better. What does this data frame look like? We very simply need to call the get return function with the ticker symbol of the Darwin in question. For consistency, we'll stick with NTI, and here we'll get the output that we're looking for. Let's run that again just to get it. The output columns include D periods accumulated up until the timestamp in question and the return in question. If you were to simply call plot on the cumulative return column, of this output, it would resemble what you see on the DarwinX platform under the underlying strategy returns. And it is this data that we're going to use in future tutorials, where we'll put it through certain transformations depending on the research we're doing at that point in time. But essentially, this is how we access underlying strategy return data from the FTP server. And we also went through an explanation of what each of the numbers visible in each binary encoded line in the file you find on the FTP server contains. See you in the next tutorial. As always, if you enjoyed this presentation, please do consider sharing it with your social networks, colleagues, coworkers, and friends. And do subscribe to the DarwinX YouTube channel so you remain up to date with all future videos that will be released in this series and other topics discussed on DarwinX. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time.